such a time as this. And welcome back to For Such a Time as This. I'm your host, Pastor James Pittman. Today with two special guests, Pastor Calvin Lindstrom and Stephanie Trussell, the uh, emeritus uh, radio host of Chicago. <laughs> welcome to you two, too, For Such a Time as This. Want to get into it. I was having a conversation with Stephanie the other day, and she was explaining things to me that I had not heard and still don't believe. <laughs> Somehow that they are, when I say they, those in the political world, are politicizing COVID-19. Here to tell us about that. Stephanie, how are they, those, those political operatives, usually on the left, mm -hmm. the Democrats, how are they politicizing the coronavirus? Well, you know, our former mayor, I say our because I still feel like a Chicago and I live in Chicago land. What did Rahm Emanuel say? Never let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah. And there's good Democrats, they're following suit. So uh, we, we are treated to our daily updates from the mayor of Chicago as well as the governor of Illinois. And so I don't n necessarily pay attention. But one day they cut in. I had Rush Limbaugh on my headphones and normally I'll change to another station. Uh, somewhere else in the United States just to hear Rush. But that day I didn't feel like it. So I listened to Lori Lightfoot. I want to say it was last Tuesday um, and a week ago. And, and she came out with the numbers that disproportionately blacks were being killed. Over 70% of the people in Cook County or Chicago that died of this virus happened to be black. Mm -hmm. And so she went on and on and pushed this agenda that she was going to uh, wipe out poverty in 10 years and, and back in February, I went to one of her events, it was 500 people at the Union League Club when she introduced this plan to wipe out poverty in, in 10 years, even though the Democrats have been running Chicago since the 30s and it's, you know, they've yeah. had decades and decades of ignoring certain yeah. sides of the town or whatever. And so here she's pushing this agenda now. And But what, what really surprised me is that she said that we're disproportionately affected by this and they, they will give a, a, a myriad of reasons why yeah. but she said even if we had access to the same medical facilities as everyone else it wouldn't affect the numbers very much because we live in more dangerous neighborhoods and we have more stress than our white counterparts so and i'm just i'm, I'm shaking my head i couldn't believe what i was listening to and so they're using this opportunity to tell us that we're the victims and this is horrible and yeah. this virus is 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 this is proportionally affecting us. But then I remember in the very beginning on social media, um, even on some of the radio I listened to, callers would say, well, I thought uh, we're immune to this because um, there are no coronavirus cases in, in Africa. So they went from us not being uh, able to catch it to us being disproportionately affected. But what gets me is that she, she went on this whole thing about how it's affecting black people. But then the very next day, she signs legislation to make sure that illegals get treatment and um, to get everything else that everybody else is getting. And I'm thinking, well, how are you going to address the disproportionate negative effects uh, on black people? Help it, me it out, Stephanie. Me mm -hmm. I, I still don't understand how the virus is racist again. Can you, can you explain a little better? How, how is it? You, why is it disproportionately affecting black people again? Well, you know, disproportionately, we have higher cases of high, hypertension, um, diabetes, asthma. And, and, that's, and, and that's whose fault is that? I'm sorry. That's, well, I, I would say, hey, we've got a progressive mayor, a black gay mayor. We've got a progressive governor. How could black people be disproportionately affected by anything? Because we, we're under the, 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 the care of the people that most care about us, which blows me away. Yeah, so this is what they're saying that um, because, you know, in our neighborhoods, we don't have access to fresh food and, and some of the stores well they don't a lot sell of fresh food on the uh, south food, side yeah, chicago that's what they'll t we li they live in food deserts is what the gotcha. democrats have been telling us and i don't know if you guys have been paying attention this last day or so we're talking about using this as an opportunity to politicize obviously the uh <laughs> the budget for the government of state is going to be affected now jb pritzker is using this opportunity to push his progressive tax saying you know there's going to be a hole in the budget and so, you know, we got to make that up somewhere. And this is something they've been pushing for a couple of years anyway. And, we mm -hmm. know, it comes, it's on the ballot in November. Mm -hmm. And and now this is a time like, well, like it's almost your civic duty. You We need to make sure these people pay, pay their fair share. And I always spell it F-A-R-E because you're paying a fee for being successful. Yeah. And anyone who doesn't understand that successful people, the people that they will be targeting with this new uh, fair tax, because I'm so grateful for the fact that our con whoever put in the Constitution of Illinois a flat tax, but they don't understand these are the people that can afford to move. So more people will be yet fleeing Illinois. They're not going to stay here and allow their pockets to be picked. 
and everybody, I don't know, you guys have heard a lot of these major companies, corporations, everybody's taking a haircut. Either the executives are getting laid off or they're taking a percentage cut. In government, has anybody been, you know, laid off? Are of they tightening not. their belts? Are they cutting anybody? That's what I'm saying. Because no offense, you know, I, I just think about the ones that are working from home. Now they don't have the expense of driving. Maybe you could just cut a little bit. So, there's some way we can cut some fat. Everybody's taking a haircut but the government. So this is a reason for them to say, well, we're going to have to come after you. And we're going to tax the, the, the greedy rich because you know they're not paying their fair share. And, and But let's, let's be honest. Yeah. If they don't open up this economy, we're all yeah. going to sink. You yeah. have to open it up. On For such a time as this later on, I'm going to do some videos about uh, the Tucker Carlson interview with the, the governor of New Jersey and the great senator from the great state of Louisiana, Kennedy, who basically said, look, people, we're going to have to bite the butt bullet. We've got to bite the bullet. We've got to open up regardless because you, on the one hand, you have the possibility of dying from the COVID-19. On the other hand, you have the surefire possibility of dying from hunger and poverty. <laughs> We've got to choose. And the lesser of two evil is this virus, because in the human history, more people, as we all know, have died from hunger and poverty than any virus. And that's just the harsh reality. Um, I don't see how viruses can be racist, but that's what it seems like they're pushing, which leads oh to the God. next topic, mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. There was a, and Calvin, we were talking about this, I think you were talking about this, there was a congresswoman in Michigan mm -hmm. that was saved from the the treatment that Trump suggested. Um, suggested. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, he's been encouraging, well, you know, uh, uh, under the guise of the professionals, medical yes. professionals, and this is a drug that's been used for decades to treat malaria, I believe. So it's not some newfangled drug yeah. that no it's one It's already knows. FDA approved, I'm told. Right, exactly. And so she was actually, she actually recovered and she said, hey, it worked. And they went after her. Oh. Yeah. How did they go after her specifically? Well, she's being targeted and um, be, by because obviously she's a congressman, so she's constantly running for re-election every two years. And mm -hmm. they're going after her because she went on, how dare you go on the Fox and not be in that position where you're just bashing the president or bashing mm -hmm. Republicans. She went on to say, hey, this drug worked. It was great. I felt better in a, you know, within a couple of days. And, and this is something that people should be celebrating, you would think. But again, never let a good crisis go to waste. And they prefer just to have more numbers because every time someone dies, that's another um, mark against Trump saying, oh, he let this person die because now they're trying to sell us that. Had Trump notified us back in January, had Trump no, uh, done something earlier, but we have to remember when Trump said, hey, let's sh shut down travel from China. What did they say? He was a xenophobe, that he um, you know, was racist. And, and let's, let's face it, if Trump had come out with an orange coronavirus t-shirt on, handing out flyers back in January saying, this is coming. This is horrible. Um, we got to do something about it. It's no way the never Trumpers, the people suffering from Trump derangement syndrome would have listened to anything he had to say. And and let's give him a little grace because nobody had ever dealt with anything like this. And as soon as he figured out what it was, he and everybody else got together and said, this is what we got to do. But everybody's given grace for mishandling this at first, but, but not President Trump. And he was really busy because you have to remember, we had a, a, a laser focus agenda of taking him out. So he's dealing with being impeached and everything else that he's got to deal with as president. But, uh, and so now they're trying to blame all the deaths on him. And I don't know if you got I'm, I'm still waiting for someone to do a real uh, study on why disproportionately is New York being hit uh, opposed to California and with its more population and more people from Asia and all these other places. And and that's pretty startling numbers of people that have died, but almost half of them are in New York. So why are we? looking at them saying how did they mishandle it but everything is trump's fault no matter what because, yeah let me uh, let me share some other statistics here uh no. you know i think this disease is biased against uh french or flemish speaking people i i don't know that any disease has had more statistics than this one. Oh yeah but, for sure real yeah. clear politics interesting mm -hmm. website so if you look at deaths per million belgium spain italy france St. Martin, which is uh, I'm not, where, where is that? Statistically insignificant. They had uh, nine United deaths. States, Netherlands, Switzerland, Sweden, Luxembourg, oh and then the United States in oh. 
per. Have you noticed, guys, on the media when we hit a certain number, they when we exceeded Italy, they said now um um you know United States has more deaths than Italy, and I'm just you know not a college graduate, just a dumb grandma driving around the suburbs talking to my talk radio, and I immediately went and Google what's the population of right. Italy? It's 60 million. We have 300 and something million. They won't tell you the 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 actual numbers they just want us because all we've heard about how horrible things are in italy so when we just hear on the news at the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour oh you know we've exceeded italy we're thinking oh my goodness but yeah. you know proportionately it's if we our numbers are rather low considering yeah i mean we're, we're up there but no uh belgium is four point oh four times greater mm -hmm. number of deaths per per million um uh this thing gets updated uh, frequently okay. oh, uh, very you know, good. sweden I guess this virus must be biased against Sweden because <laughs> they have a higher death rate than, uh, than where's the, us. Hold now, on. Where was the first country from Africa? Native Africans on there. Uh, you can't count Egypt and stuff. Those are the Arabs that's migrated there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I don't know how many tests they've been able to do in mm -hmm. parts of Africa. I'll, I'll find it. Uh, let's see here. You have to go Wait, they're not doing tests, and and I don't know how many tests in Africa. They don't care enough to do tests in Africa. Well, That's racist. Well, yeah. Right, uh, you know. Okay, here's here's the Democratic Republic of Congo is the first one I think I'm seeing on the country. They uh, they according to Real Clear Politics, they've done um, twenty thousand tests there. Uh, no, DRC uh, eight nineteen thousand tests there, and they claim uh, twenty two deaths in uh the congo drc so they're doing uh, and did you say well. nine in saint martin martin, martin in the, yeah I, saint martin, I think it's a tiny little island i, I say i, I want to go and i've always wanted to go there it seems like oh no nine deaths that's the place to go and be i don't know but where is saint yeah. martin that's uh, down well, in the caribbean i think down yeah, you know one of those be, islands yeah. that you hit when you take a caribbean cruise right, okay yeah down there so i'm I, in my I mean, own private island I, I oh just right i see we, well, apparently and, uh, st martin is right behind calvin there because yeah, that's might the be place that i want to be but you know i encourage everybody um because we, we may have more time and some of you guys are essential which i love that you're able to work from home but i'm finding a lot of conservatives that are usually too busy are uh, now they find themselves with this time and i encourage everyone to listen to liberal radio especially out of chicago and when you have people saying Stephanie. that you can't do it, I know it it's hard. The brain. You, it does, it does. But when you hear callers call in and say, well, you know, they must be telling the, the doctors not to treat black people at the hospital for this. And it's, so you cannot control, as a, a person that was on the radio for a little bit, you cannot control what callers say. But I certainly look for the host to say, well, that, that doesn't make sense. And they're black medical professionals. They wouldn't go along with this. But they yeah. just... They're trying to say everything. This is racist. This whole thing is racist. How they're treating us is racist. They got to sell that victimhood to them, no matter what the situation is. And now that they're requiring in some villages in Chicagoland and in the state of um, New York, I think, and in, in California, there you have to wear a mask when you go out in public. So I'm listening to the radio this morning, and they're saying, "Well, it's going to be hard to be a black man out with a face mask on. You're going to be racially profiled. So what are you going to do?" in this time in this crisis call in right now what is it like are you afraid to be a black man in the coronavirus um season I, and i'm thinking oh my goodness I they have to sell their victimhood i, to I don't understand victimhood what i don't get it i don't get it and you know in our neighborhoods in black neighborhoods we i would hear that they were the last to um adhere to what uh lori lightfoot was saying as yeah. far as social distancing I, yeah. i'm listening to people and they said you can drive down certain streets on the west side of chicago Pulaski, and madison and people were just out like they hadn't heard that you're supposed to, you know, not be out. You're not so in front of stores socializing. They're just out, just shopping and just living their lives. And so, you know, I'm just. Why is thinking, that okay. racist to bring that up, Stephanie? Is that well, racist you know, to bring well, that up? As Republicans, we can't bring it up. A, a liberal can bring it up without any kind of backlash. And especially, uh, and how Lori was driving around. Uh, did you hear that Lori Life was driving around, busting up groups of people standing? And, um, and, you know, they weren't practicing social distance. And she even had a PSA on the black radio station saying, if you observe restaurants and businesses not, uh, you know, not adhering to our new social distancing law, call nine, call 311. So I'm thinking, so if you, you witness a drive by, is there a number? You know, we're not addressing. Did you know last Tuesday, 22 people were shot in one day in Chicago? Yeah. I don't understand that, what's going on. They still have this agenda 
to they got to shoot people because I guess people need killing. And speaking nah. of which, abortion clinics are still open. Your dentist can't take off my son's braces, but you know that our orthodontist appointments. But we still so so it just cracks me up how she we're turning into you know where we're turning in our our fellow citizens, our neighbors because they're not exercising social distance. So there is a number for that, but we're not addressing what's what's really happening still in those neighborhoods um, that people are still out shooting each other. And the five year old was shot a couple weeks ago. Here's it's what I've said before, and I'll say it again. There's stupidity, and then there's stupidity. But this is not normal stupidity. This has to have a spiritual component tied to this. I think the evil one is is oh, doing the yeah. puppet master on this because this <laughs> is not normal stupidity. If you look at the the interview with the governor of New Jersey that was not normal stupidity <laughs> and this is not normal stupidity you're going after a virus that still last time I checked hasn't even caught the flu yet hasn't caught it yet in the amount of raw deaths raw numbers mm -hmm. it closed the gap but I still don't think it's caught it yet as of yesterday it didn't and yet this is what's going on this is not normal stupidity this is extraordinary, super spiritual stupidity. And I, I think there's going to be some very, very real repercussions from this. What? I don't know, but this is not normal stupidity. Okay, Calvin, yep. uh, last words as we close up. Anything? You know, um, we, we have to be anchored in the Lord. In, in this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So much information. Yeah, conspiracies. We know wicked people. Uh, you know, Paul said uh, in in Second Timothy, evil men will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being, being deceived. deceived. Mm -hmm. So we 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 have plenty of examples of of that deception. Yeah. But uh, I I think we have to as much as we can without being Pollyannish. We do have to to recognize that continuing the things which you have learned and been assured of. Uh, the, the the confidence in Scripture and uh, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So uh, there are aspects that we are are learning. Some we're we're happy to learn, others but we're not as happy to learn. But uh, we, we yeah. keep up keep up the fight of faith. In yep. this. So agreed. Agreed. Let your focus well, thank be on, uh, be on Christ. So yeah. Well, thank you for tuning in for such a time as this. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Calvin, for being a guest. Thank you, Here on for such a time as this, we'll see you all later. God bless. And yeah. remember, I, I got to leave with this. The goal of the church is to preach the gospel, not to give false hope. That's it. Done. Amen. See you later. <laughs>